Welcome to the Golden Feather. Grab a pint, a plate, and pick your seats. Your hosts, Vertek and Chibi Bree, are back from their latest adventure. I'm sad. <laughs> Welcome to the Golden Feather. <laughs> Grab a pint and a plate and pick your seats. <laughs> Your hosts Vertek and Chibi Bree are back from their latest adventure with Cabal Gaming. <laughs> oh. Oh, did we do the one without the uh, voice on it? I went through the pre-made ones and I was like, there's no audio. Where's the audio? <laughs> <laughs> it's not playing any audio. <laughs> I don't oh, know what loudy, happened. Loudy. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Hi. Welcome in. Oh dear. Oh my, my goodness. Goodness, time flies. Wood chip. I was about to say someone gave me the giggles. Yeah, that's because uh I, I giggle a lot when I'm nervous and when I realize that I made a oopsie, I get a little nervous. <laughs> and the boo boos happen. Yes they do. <laughs> you too. <laughs> Good, good. I'm glad we're not the only one. Uh, hi, welcome to episode 58, I believe. Is yes. Oh, we actually, we're still showing 57 yep. on the um. I'm working on the Twitch. That. We were we were working on the name, um, and I think we went with. It's a cabal, not a cult. <laughs> Theater Elf, thank you so much. Thank you so much. There we go. I am up Yeah, it's now. a cabal, not a cult. Because we have today a cabal gaming with us. How are you, sir? How was your day? I am doing all right. Getting ready for Thanksgiving over here in the States. Uh, I don't know about how you guys, but I've got a big menu planned up. Nice. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wanna um... Yeah, I was going to say, expand on that. Expand yeah. on that. Give us, give us <laughs> like, more an idea. Us that? <laughs> give, give you an idea? Well, yeah, I like to adhere to some of the classics. You got to have your uh, your green bean casserole. Mm -hmm. That's a uh, that's a favorite of the faithful. Uh, What is it? I think Mrs. Cabal is going to do sweet potatoes. I'm not a particular mm -hmm. fan of it, but hey. It's a must. It's a must. And I'm sorry, uh, you need to become a fan of it because that's a staple of <laughs> life. Not just not just seasonal, it's a staple of life. Okay. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. We all have ideological differences. <laughs> <laughs> fair point, fair point. So tell us more about yourself, sir, in the uh the realm of content and ashes and doing the video gamey stuff and the uh content creation around video gamey stuff. All right. Well, uh I am of course, you know, Cabal, Cabal Gaming is my channel. You can find it over on YouTube. Find me under the same name over on Twitter. And what I do is mainly open world and survival games. Specifically, taking my trusty lantern and delving into their depth. Uh, what I like to do is play games like Minecraft, uh, Seven Days to Die, things such as that. Anything that has an open world where I can explore and discover things and basically go my own route. And that's part of the thing that brought me into Ashes was the fact that it has a whole open world map it is something that I am rearing to explore and make content on i've already done uh, two videos on it so far a basic breakdown which to my liking was a bit too similar to peons but hey people like it so i'm not complaining yeah i've also done go. a lore video so uh people also seem to like that one as well i'm ready to get my hands on those classes and just see what they've got to offer though yeah, me too. Now, um, with the Ashes thing, I think it's really nifty how it's not only just like open world, but it's open reactive world. It's not just you can go anywhere and do anything and, and, and adventure how you will. It's you can go anywhere and do anything. And oh, yeah, it might not be the same as it was yesterday because insert a multitude of reasons why nodes and whatnot change. Mm -hmm. Oh, definitely. That is super exciting and something I'm looking forward to. I want to uh, I want to find all the secrets. All the things. Yes. Yes. 
Yeah. By the way, Speaking yes. Secrets. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, no. You what? what? I was going to say, yes, they do. They do react. They should be reacting. Let me let me test a follow real quick. Here's a follow. Totally real cat ears. Hashtag totally real. And here's a subscription. Oh, yeah, they do kind of dance around and do stuff. <laughs> the the follow is a little harder to see, so I think I'll also put that on the wave. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> I was... I was colors. Uh, my totally real cat ears? Yeah, totally. <laughs> super real. <laughs> Purr. There's a raid anyway. going on inside Bree's head. Yes. <laughs> that, that is how excited I am every single time one of you supports us. <laughs> so, so yeah. um so tell us here speaking of secrets and stuff speaking of secrets cabal the name how's that tie into your your um online persona because we were talking about that so, a little bit before the show but these people may not know so cabal as persona is a cultist of the eldritch gods of gaming if any of you are familiar with the cthulhu mythos then you'll be familiar with uh, you know, just the kind of things that lie outside the minds of mortal men and how there's realities and existences beyond our own in such stories. And the way I look at video games is they are dimensions and or worlds unto themselves. And through the medium of video games, that's how we get to explore them. And that's a, uh, that's a nifty little way to approach it, I think. Get a little bit more immersed into it. And, you know, trying to find out all the secrets and all the things that normally you wouldn't get a chance to in life. And so I was like, okay, cool. That's interesting. I'll just be a cultist of whatever wonderful gods created that. <laughs> oh, Lord. So are you saying you're going to go right after the, uh, the outcast gods? Like they're going to be the... Know. <laughs> uh -oh. I think you may have pegged me on that one. <laughs> bum, bum, that's, that's been a. Oh look, there's there's Tavern Side in the chat. Tavern Side has heard me go on uh, before about uh, wanting to know about the others. I'm sure he's seen me type it enough times at Intrepid. Tell us it's more about the, the others. others. Yeah, basically. Uh, I'm I really heard. hoping that there's uh, some with you know. Lovecraftian undertones. If there are, I'll be extremely happy. Because that'll be right up my alley. We have uh, a winner. <laughs> Please, more, more others, others lore. Lore. Yes. <laughs> Speaking Just of she knows lore. what I'm talking about. Right, yeah. alright. So, outside of the um, the open world aspect, or maybe that is it, but I was going to say, what outside of that, what would be your, your favorite aspect of Ashes? What's the so next biggest my, thing that makes you go, hey, hey, yeah. So the next biggest thing that makes me excited about Ashes is, and it's probably pretty easy to guess this, but the fact that they're going to be seeding the world with secret content and that can be discoverable by classes such as rogues or mage or mages or things like that. Uh, being able to find those, uh, hopefully before anybody else does, and seeing if they have a possible permanent effect on your character, whether it's through cosmetic or the augment system. Maybe you get a cool augment out of it that is unique, whoever finds that. Or something like that is something that hasn't really been touched on, but has been alluded to, and I think is extremely interesting. I don't think we see enough of in games is being able to find that something that could possibly make us stand out from the crowd besides just an achievement or a title or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. I like that too, being able to dig stuff up. And you know what? That's one thing that not enough games do, I think, is give each class a purpose. Like being able to use a rogue to get into certain areas and lockpick and such. And they're the only ones that can do it. And using like a mage to be able to, you know, say demystify or remove an illusion to a wall or something like that. And only the mage can do it. Or a cleric um, to dispel evil curses. Yeah. Or, like, you know, just yeah. super overpowered armor. Yeah. <laughs> that would be super interesting. I think that would add a lot to the individual class fantasy as well. 
Yeah, I think uh, I think there's so many games that are afraid of making each game or each uh, class within their game have anything exclusive because then people get upset because they're not playing that class and they feel left out. See, like, well, just... That's where WoW did it right. I was super jealous of that warlock mount. Of course I went and leveled up a warlock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for the most part though, they started kind of getting rid of class differences except for a few key things like that. Yeah. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. And I'm hoping that's one of the things where Ash is going to stand out is when you choose your class, when you decide to pursue a certain path to power, yeah, you're going to miss out on things, but you're going to get something in exchange that makes you feel like it was worth it. If I decide okay. I'm going to pursue the path of following the others, I, you know, I'm going to miss out on some stuff from, you know, worshiping one of the seven, but hopefully there's something cool enough that is going to make me feel like, okay, well, I got my, my patronage worth. So, um, looking at, uh, Ashes of Nera's question, what do you think, what aspects do you think that the others cover? So what do we got for the seven at the moment? We've got fate, love, creation. I can't think of the others, here. the other ones. Yeah. Let me take seven. a look. Cause I know we only have what, like four or five, I think four. Yeah, we haven't been told too much on the lore front. Truth. Yes. Oh, truth. Five. Okay, five. What we might be looking at, we might be looking at one of them embodying the aspect of destruction because that's just the polar opposite of creation. Lord of chaos. And, yeah, <laughs> basically. Uh, we might have one that's kind of like, almost, are you familiar with the, the lore of Warhammer 40,000? Mm-hmm. To a point. So, okay. So we may have one that's uh, kind of, you know, intrigue in falsehoods, which would be a, you know, an opposite of the one of truth. That would be uh, interesting. I don't think for... they're going to be direct opposites. I think they may be. Oh, what's the phrase maybe, I'm looking for? Maybe something like. Uh... Equal but opposite. Maybe not opposites, but something something that's like catty corner, not directly opposite, but just kind of kind of like uh, complementary. Yeah. A balance, maybe. Yeah. But not an exact. Maybe something like that. I'm trying to think of what the um, what the word is you're looking for exactly. Words are hard. I mean, there's too we many of may, them. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we may. One of the things that just occurred to me, and you know, one the others. One of their aspects may be uh, growth or change or something of that. Mm. Uh, yeah. You know, I'd be curious that. if he had something that if he, if he, when, you know, because Steve is doing a lot, or Steven's doing a lot of the, uh, the lore stuff around it because it's already basically pre built. If he did some interesting things with just aspects and naming them in a way that they don't exactly cover what you think they are, like, uh, Let's say if you were to do like a, a kind of like the misunderstood Re Grim Reaper thing, like yeah, it's a it's yeah. a harbinger of death, but they're doing a very vital duty, and it's it's actually something that's required, and just there's a stigma behind it rather than a factual evil. Yeah, yeah, and that's that out. It, it's a good thing you said that, Vertex, because that's one of the things I'm hoping for is that the others aren't just evil; is that they have that aspect where you can. You know, basically, you can root for the bad guy because you're like, you know what? Maybe they were right. Maybe the others like, did nothing wrong. Or was it which, wrong. Uh, which god was it that got in trouble for bringing fire to humans? Prometheus. Prometheus. Yeah. 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 That's Something like that. actually. That's an example I've thrown out before. Is that maybe they are the Prometheus of the Ashes lore? And uh, I I like that aspect of it, and I hope it gets played up a little bit. Hmm. Yeah, me too. Me too. I'm, I'm, I got high hopes. I mean, if he was using this stuff as a as a backdrop for Pathfinder games, he had to have fleshed it out pretty well. Because who's who's gonna tear apart a backstory quicker than anybody? Pathfinder and D and D players. Oh yeah, they're gonna poke holes in the story and tear it apart so quickly. It's gonna be bananas. <laughs> Much yeah. quicker than MMO players ever would. I mean, I've oh, seen some trash a... MMOs that last a really long time and they have shit Ooh. story. As a uh, a longtime DM and uh, player, 
you are you are dead on with that. Uh, I feel that in my soul. <laughs> it's because they have something they want to get away with, and the only way to do it is to poke a hole in the GM story. Yes. Oh, but you didn't I mention... thought this was going to be fun, not give me flashbacks. <laughs> <laughs> but you didn't mention that it couldn't be a mace. You just said it couldn't be a wand. And I'm still a cleric and I can use maces. <laughs> <laughs> what's the uh, what's goodness. the acronym for post D and D stress disorder? Oh man, I don't even know. E D and D S D. But um speaking of Pathfinder and such, how much of the live stream did you hang out for? For uh I was there thing? for about all of four hours of it. Uh at I think it was in the time between what was it the the PTSD and D? <laughs> <laughs> sounds about right. Uh I was there uh, oops, I accidentally hit my mic. I was there for I think I crashed right after the 2 a.m. giveaway for a little bit. Uh I just couldn't stay up any longer. My energy reserves were exhausted. I'd had a long day. I was following the stream. Um, yeah, because I know for a minute you were, you were like, I'm going to be here for the whole thing. And you basically were. I think you were there for in, in um, uh, Jalan's chat, too. I dipped in and out. Um, okay, because I saw, I saw your name pop up in there once or twice. I wasn't sure if you were like dual monitor, just to hanging out, watching the streams, like popcorn in hand. Like, but uh, Well, I was definitely having my fun with it. Um I wanted to see all the Minecraft stuff, but I just oh. I need to do I need to get a little bit of sleep. Oh, did you not make it to the to see the Minecraft? Um, no, oh. I, I did, but I was uh, I was taking some micro naps in between. I definitely okay. got to see uh, the unfortunate occurrence with lava, <laughs> <laughs> uh, which is what the, I'm always uh, like, oh, about. <laughs> oh man. The, the fecal sh the fecal circus that resulted of that. <laughs> I'm off. Good fecal night. Circus, uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> You're not gonna no, be that was, Good night, C. That uh that injected some I think much needed drama and excitement to the night. Yeah. <laughs> I think it injected some very much needed drama and excitement because there were oh, yeah. people like you were man. saying, like sleeping and getting says tired. The, it says the man I woke up just before that. <laughs> yeah. Well, see me. I had I had work in the morning, so I was like, I'm gonna go to sleep. They he just did. started the Minecraft thing. I'm like, wake me up when it's when it's judging time. He did. And yeah. I passed out, and I woke up to all right. My eyes are cracking open, and <laughs> <laughs> oh no, Maggie's just like spam somebody. Oh, there's Z and somebody else running through the woods. Why are they in armor? Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, what's happening? And next thing you know, it was just nothing but screams and excitement, both here in the apartment and on the stream, and the chat just lit up. It's like the world woke up at that moment. Yeah. Oh man, it was, it was, John, John, it was definitely lava. good. <laughs> it was amazing. Yeah. As a, oh uh, my gosh. As a Minecrafter uh, myself, I, it, it hit me right in, <laughs> right in the gut. I was like, oh, oh no. There was just, uh, man, like at that exact moment, I was like cheering at the fact that there was drama and excitement, but at the same time, my heart <laughs> broke for that team. <laughs> The oh, second, yeah. the second All we heard work. toast, the second we heard toast and like how upset she was, I was like, "Oh, I feel you." <laughs> there, there was a part of me that was empathetic, but at the same time, I was like, "That's what you get for building it out of wood." But node wars, right? But yeah, <laughs> node wars. I mean, that's just imagine, and that's specifically why I wanted to to talk about that one is <laughs> that is just a taste of the drama and intensity that there's going to be when people spend months months building up a node and someone comes by and just i mean it's not going to be instantaneous whack but like I mean, someone comes level. down and just tears it over <laughs> just tears but it like, down and does the equivalent of just dropping lava in the middle of your house that's going to be my saying from now on whenever we're trying to like Declare war on a node. I'm gonna be like, we're we're dropping lava on your house. All right. <laughs> You're about to yeah. get hashtag toasted. 
That's what I was gonna say. Is she probably would have found it a lot more oh amusing? God. Oh my goodness, she she probably would have found terrible. it a lot. She probably would have found it a lot more amusing had she not been up twenty two hours straight at that That's point. That's true. So I think the exhaustion plus the, um, yeah, I know, I know, oh, but oh, uh, I, I don't know if Toast is a PvP player necessarily. Maybe she might be a lot more like me because I know I would be super like heartbroken if I was like, look at this thing. I no, it's ruined. Like, uh, yeah, I would. I just I would completed my be. freehold. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Toast strikes me as the type of person who does PvP because her friends are doing PvP and she wants to hang out yeah. with the friends. And then once yeah. the friends yeah. leave PvP, then she ducks out. That's that's a, that's the type of person that she strikes me as. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. That's the type of person I am. I just get a lot of competitive when I'm in there. I'm just not great at PvP. So well, you know, speaking of long. speaking of trolling and fun, how about Ooh. watching Steven get pied in the face? <laughs> that was an amazing oh that video it brought a tear to my eye just how it was presented it was silly and everything but it was still fantastic <laughs> look at him in all of his shaved glory this is man he looks like somebody else entirely yeah, he does. he's an imposter a little scared shave Steve, shave Steven is sus <laughs> Smash! <laughs> Shouting about the painting. Oh yeah, how tragic would that have been? Painting. How tragic would that have been if you know the art on the wall gets splattered with cream pies? <laughs> oh my! I like how that just gets seated on there. <laughs> oh. The last pie on the face and the last pie on the head just get kind of like. Yeah. Behold, it is a fancy hat. In. <laughs> just, I hope that's not an expensive chair he's sitting on. But if you guys got the money to replace it, it's Stephen. Oh, Lordy. Oof. That's seriously like a big showing. <laughs> oh, jeez. John with the wipe up immediately. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> By the way, I don't know if you guys are able to hear. It is time to clean up. <laughs> I don't know if you guys are able to hear what they were saying because i have a different audio level than you guys do so <laughs> i just mainly heard the video <laughs> i yeah, heard you guys yeah, talking I, I, but i didn't know what you were saying <laughs> yeah i unmuted the video oh, okay. depending on perspective i bet everything in steven's house is expensive you know he's yeah, talked about playing sorry. warhammer forty thousand. i want to see his collection right. i want to see how much plastic crack he has yeah, it's actually right now. Let's see, what are they? So right now they are eighth as a studio, as an individual contributor with $83,650 and uh, 10th as a streaming team with 88596 Nice. So, I, I thought they would raise around 65 k like I was fairly certain they were gonna crush last year's uh last year's and crush this year's goal, but I yeah. did not expect like eighty plus thousand. That yeah. was it was awesome to see the community come out like that with that outpouring of support and do something great for kids. Yeah, honestly <laughs> I thought they were going to like top up what they did prior and just basically double what's happened so far, like you know, they're talking about 55, 56 K is what they've gathered so far in the past couple of years. Well, now they're going to this year get that same amount because there was a huge growth in people yeah. in this past year. So, you know, I could see it. I could see him matching that. No, I, I did not see it being almost like what? Uh, one and a half. I mean, shoot, more than one and a half. But going from 
55 in the past three years to 88. It's insane. Yeah, it's a little crazy. Oof. Massively impressive. And any of you who had any part of that, which I know some of your names definitely did, even TSG there, I know you had a giant chunk from your... Uh, mm -hmm. I believe you collected it on your stream and dumped it in so you could uh, <laughs> trigger some of the results of the day of stream donations. Yeah. Yeah. Like, good job collecting that from your community, man. That's fantastic. Looking at TSG. <laughs> yeah. Well, yet it's Sim was too. friggin' bananas. Oh, this was didn't he huge. raise like, he raised like $10,000. Yeah, 10K. He did a 12 hour stream. And got 10k donations. That's that's insane. It's really crazy, yeah. It's insane, but it's it's awesome at the same time. That's one of the okay, things so that does make me hopeful. That was all you, damn. Well, so Tavern, <laughs> that was that was just your donation. That's even more impressive, man. Your heart, man. Yeah. Good job on that. I applause you, except I don't want to clap too loud uh, close to my microphone. Your yearly charity I'll, I'll fund. Give him a okay. nice I'll give him a nice Golf hearty club. pogger. Poggers. There you go. Yeah, Pogger. There you go. Poggers in chat for TSG. Poggers. Can, can I do that as a guest? <laughs> yeah, I think um, Bardic was saying the same thing. Like he ended up, um, he has an annual charity fund that he ended up donating into it as well, which that's that's just really cool. Like, Honestly, that's something yeah. uh, Vertek and I talked about with the. Now that we've gotten a lot of the core things taken care of, like uh, graphic updates and stuff like that. Over the next year, we would like to start saving a percentage of what you guys give us for charity as well. Yeah, and just drop it into like the Intrepid, uh, you know, the Extra Life stream. But, you know, we'll also uh, hopefully we'll be in a better situation ourselves here soon and we'll be able yes. to start uh, saving up more money ourselves for, can I, for can I charity tell stuff. Uh-oh. Can I tell them? Uh-oh. Reset, go. Guys, I got an internship as a full stock developer at a local uh, business, and I'm doing an unpaid internship for three months. And in February or March, I might get either a part time, full time, or a paid internship. It depends on how quickly I learn and how much uh, what they have available for me. So um, they said that they're gonna shoot for a median. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> See? <laughs> <laughs> not yet. Not yet. I need a good job first. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> not today, um, not today. But uh, yeah, not maybe not tomorrow either. But you know, um, but um, we got a fur baby. Yeah, we do. Fur. We have a Cora and we have a Diva who always tackles the mics now. But yeah, thank you. So uh, hopefully that puts us in a much better position. And we are always super grateful. Like all of this, the the overlay. Um, all of this is because of you guys, honestly. So we just wanted to thank you and um, hopefully we can add a little extra pizzazz soon. So that's okay. That's okay. I understand. It is kind of big news, but um, I just, I, you know, try to stay away from necessarily saying too much personal real life stuff on, on stream and on the interwebs because of doxing and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> not tomorrow think about it um, <laughs> yeah that's a thing so i just hey. i wanted to make sure it was okay first because i was kind of excited on that note <laughs> congratulations i Thank hope that you. turns out great for you and i'm looking forward to see what you guys are able to do with that yeah yeah try not to wear any cosplay outfits to work her just says uh, why not <laughs> Well, Why I mean, not? hey, if it's working from home a bunch of the time, I guess, you know, what it's better remote. time? I forgot to add that. It's a remote job. <laughs> Hashtag all day pajamas. Right. Right. right? I mean, that's why I <laughs> just then... went uh, like today and finally got a haircut for the first time in two months. Because, you know, working from home, I don't need to impress anybody. I don't need to look you know, like suave <laughs> when I go out anywhere. Uh, Ash is near. I, I would like that, except I don't want to go back to California. <laughs> if they ever consider remote work, yes, <laughs> but I don't. I don't want to go back. <laughs> um, Cali yes. is the devil. Honestly, just like have that super businessy looking shirt next to you, and when that Zoom meeting hits, you just put it on real quick and like professional, brush your hair real quick. <laughs> no, no, which what you got to do is you got to use that video editing experience. You wear a green shirt and you just chroma key like business attire onto it. 
There you go. There you go. Yeah, exactly. It's the five head play. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. Also, um, while we're on this topic of uh, raising funds and stuff, uh, Vertec and I had an idea, and of course, Kaval and any future friends who are joining us, uh, you're thinking we'd like to do a 24 hour stream uh, possibly next year. Um, and our <laughs> farming, <laughs> farming babies, what? No. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway, we were thinking of doing a 24-hour uh, stream next year, and we wanted to kind of put everybody on in it, uh, that we've had as a guest and kind of chat with them for the full 24 hours, uh, maybe a little bit of gaming, things that would be easier for people like Z and uh, Bagel, sorry, Faisal, <laughs> Um You'll and cosplay, yes, and heart. cosplay, uh, and yes, <laughs> and like more, more like your normal time of being awake, so that you're not up at like four a.m. when you should have been in bed two hours ago just to catch our stream, which we super appreciate. See, thank you. <laughs> yes, blanket. Yeah, I think it'd be neat to uh, kind of do a, our own little charity thing after everybody else has done theirs, just kind of as a catch-all for anybody who wasn't able to to make the other streams and kind of bring on some guests of who survived their 24-hour thing or right. just want to be on at uh, a time which is convenient to them. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, you know, interview them about how it went for them while we're getting delirious slowly. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah, and maybe play some games with some of the viewers and uh, anybody who wants to be our guest. So that might be cool. That right would be hilarious. sounds awesome. <laughs> I, uh, Speaking of I games, should random. be live streaming. Oh. You do oh, live yeah? streaming? Yeah. I should be live streaming by then, have everything set up. I'd nice. definitely be willing to come out and help. Yes, please do. Ooh, huh. And random side comment. Speaking of games, Tavern Side Gaming is coming up with a pretty good. Uh, wants to be a Varen Baron game. It's coming along. Seen some more graphics on that, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've seen but, his uh, uh, his trailer for it. Ooh, there's a trailer. Yeah, it's got some stuff. It's got yeah. some stuff. It's on his channel. If you want to go check it out, it's uh, it's pretty catchy. <laughs> I think he might be onto something. <laughs> oh yeah, but um. As far as, well, she looks that up. Other things for people to check out here is uh, Wandering Mist put out uh, a quick little recap highlight video. I think it's like 12 minutes or so of uh, the first six hours of the 24-hour stream. It's obviously not going to catch the uh, <laughs> the Minecraft hijinks. Those are towards the end. But... Hashtag toasted. <laughs> yeah, hashtag toasted. <laughs> oh, man. And also about them ancients leaks. Oh my lordy. Who else was surprised by the width and depth of the information that was dropped out? I don't know even where to start. Because like, basically, just... if you go to the wiki page, you, you know what's bananas? I was just telling, oh, I was telling you this, like. It was, um, if you go to that link for the ancients, like, and you look at through all the little reference numbers, they all got either replaced or upgraded or changed or added in somewhere. There were link numbers or reference numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 10, 11, 24, 31, and 37 were all referencing that live stream. I gotta hand it to the wiki folks. They are they are on the ball constantly. Every time new info has come out, within it feels like an hour or sometimes even minutes, I can go check and it's updated. Are you they serious? Are, Did I miss it. one? It's just ridiculous. I thought, there, I thought there were only thirty-seven reference links yeah, on it that. It only page. goes up to thirty-seven here on this page. Only 37. Oh, it must have been on a different page. Holy moly, did I miss that one? Because I thought they were all on that one page. Yeah, yeah, the lore, the lore added to the Ancients page. Um, for the wiki. Yeah. On the lore page. On the lore page. Alright, let's take a look here. I want to look at that, because I missed that one. 
unless it's just an another reference of the same stuff. Because the others are really interesting. The banished gods. Ooh. <laughs> so, While he okay. looks that up, I'm going to share this video uh, from Tavern Side. Do it. Do it. I'll be quiet for a minute. The sandals, though. <laughs> Ended up refreshing my chat. Does that guy still have a, a link in there? Uh, that person. Yeah. It's showing up for me, I think. Oh, now it's deleted. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I accidentally refreshed my chat and it was gone. You're moving up in the world. You're getting botted. Right. It's a sign of success. <laughs> Oh, that'll win. <laughs> this is why we made ZA a mod for us, because we're like, I don't know how to do the things. Help. <laughs> how do mod chat? Yeah, pretty much. Oh, please. Z <laughs> <laughs> everybody's mod. <laughs> but yeah. That's what. That's one of the things I'm not looking forward to with live streaming is. So uh, I don't know how you guys deal with everything in real time. I like my YouTube where I can plan stuff out and polish it. That's all good to you. Thank you. I think it barely just pop up there. It's fun. Yeah. It's fun. I like it. Actually, that's part of what I really like about it is when people are chatting and, and hanging out and whatnot. I, I really like the interaction with people instead of just yeah. sitting here going, well, here's our show and you can go ahead and enjoy our show and we're just going to do the show. And then, you know, the show is things and stuff. And here's our script. I like yeah. to actually interact more with people and when they pop a question in, like, start chatting about whatever they're talking about. Well, it definitely helps to have a have a partner when you're doing videos. I just get to talk to myself, which, now that I think about it, may explain the madness. <laughs> <laughs> Insert the m -m -m mad, mad, mad song. <laughs> but uh, here's the lore page with the origin and everything. And, um... Mm -hmm. The others are inserted here on the lore page. I'm sorry ahead of time for the spam, people. You're about to get it because I just kicked the bot back into gear. Oh, hey. Welcome back, bot. <laughs> the bot was supposed to catch links. Uh, okay. Right. Oops. Wrong, wrong. Yeah, uh, we use Vulture to host our bot, so... Sometimes we have to start it over again. With Alex yeah. done, they might be looking into replacement in 2021, just saying, pretty sure no one can replace Mr. Chuck Trebek. But, just a thought. Uh, what did I miss? Alex gone? Oh, Alex Trebek, the host for that and other things Jeopardy. in life, ended up dying. Oh, okay. We lost him. Lost him. Connery went and Trebek had to follow him, just to make sure he didn't get into anything. <laughs> right? <laughs> Trebek, you brigand. Yep, this was indeed updated for the November live stream right here. All right, all right, all right. Well, thank you, Sir Woodchip, for bringing that to my attention. But yeah, that's that's cool because it mentions um, yeah, it's a mention of the the Vault of Fallows Hold, which is one of the great dungeons of Ashes of Creation, located near the capital city of the ancient Tauran Empire, which. 
actually brings me up to something else I wanted to, to share is uh, Half Tilt Gamer put a post on the forums and made a video about looking for said location and trying to figure out where exactly in the world it is. And I'll I thought it was eventually. really cool. There we go. You there? Okay, yeah, there you go. But yeah, it's, it's a long one, but uh, goes through point by point and looks at the map that we've been provided and tries to pinpoint exactly where in the world it is likely to be located based on environmental clues of this image. Yeah. I thought that was a pretty cool little approach. Also, I am aware that the audio is very low and you can't hear anything. I have that kind of going on purpose. Sorry. But... He might be possibly one of our future guests, so you guys should definitely go check out this video. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna have to reach out. Yeah, definitely. Um, so yeah, let me drop that for them real quick. Mm, oh, you sure already did. Ah, uh, yep. look at you on top of it. I got it. I got it. Got it. Yeah, like I like I said before, I'm excited to treasure hunt and find secrets and find things like I don't know like uh, what they were talking about the origin of necromancy if yeah. we can find like secrets related to that in ashes I'm I'm all over it all day nice. every day I will know life this game to be able to <laughs> to be able to be like I found this before other people do find out all the lore behind the secrets of necromancy yeah. probably has a bunch to do with uh well, it'd probably tie in directly to the uh, the information from was it King Atrax? Was that his name? Atrax, Eight Tracks. That's what I'm gonna call him from King, now on. Eight Tracks. King Eight Tracks. King Eight Tracks. Driving around in his Firebird with his mullet. Oh yeah. No, he had a van. He had a van. <laughs> okay. Vans were king. You can't paint a giant mural on a Firebird, although they are sweet, <laughs> sweet rides. <laughs> But uh, yeah, wood chip. I think yeah, a tier six node to, to get that dungeon to pop up. I could I could see that happening. It's like kind of a legendary city, so it'd have to be something pretty serious to get that to pop in somewhere. I betcha. Excuse me. Now you're calling me out like that. How you know I play Legions of Nagash? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Trying to get the video that they put up on uh on who? I can't uh what in what Ash is posted. Oh I found it. <gasps> Thank you, <laughs> development skills. I appreciate you. Mer? Now she's just showing off. Right, oh right. basically I uh <laughs> I used my knowledge of front end web development and went through Twitter just to get this video. <laughs> but, um, let's see here. All right. So yes, by the way, 100th episode with Steven, Sheree. And some rig. Bum, bum, bum. Yes. November, November 15th, 15th, 3 PM Pacific. Yeah. 100 episodes. Dear Lowry. That's, we are at 58. We're halfway there. Whoa. <laughs> but um, we also started over and, you know, stuff. So um, we'll get there. There's, we'll get there someday. There's people that, like, I think who was it? I have to say thanks to Simurg and Dungeon Crawler Network. Mm -hmm. Because between those two, it's the main reason why we started podcasting. Uh, learned a lot from all the other podcasters, including Jalon, and then kind of went to this guy over here and said, Hey, I had fun on DCN's podcast. I kind of want to make one. <laughs> and he was like, Hey, I'll join that. <laughs> I'm like, Cool. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Cabal. Oh man, yeah. Didn't know. Uh, didn't know you hadn't heard of him. Yeah, Nagash is. He's. Oh man, I think he lives on the forums. He probably has an app <laughs> downloaded to his phone that yep. alerts his like watch and or 
octo ocular implant that lets him know when anything new is posted <laughs> on the forums. Because Just he watch the live has, stream it straight to my eyeballs. Probably has like ten thousand posts on the forum by now, and that's only a slight exaggeration. <laughs> if there's a thread that's gone for more than like fifteen posts, his name is probably in it somewhere. Right. I I would. I, would... I, I thought Woodchip was uh, referencing a uh, Warhammer, because that's the uh, yeah. I mean, that Warhammer might be where lore, he got it the, from. Yeah. Well, in weird. Warhammer lore, Nagash is basically the first necromancer, so oh, it's appropriate. Okay. Yeah, absolutely, because that's his whole shtick. And he has necromancy puns and, and gifts and <laughs> whatnot just coming out of his ears. But uh, yeah, definitely check him out. He's also big in the uh, the role-playing part of the forum, too. Nice. I don't see him in there. Yeah, he's a really cool cat. Woefully underread on the forums. Oh, woefully. That's all right. Okay. I used to be on them every day, all day when they were like the old school forums, and then they poofed away for a while. And then I just have not gone back anywhere near as as full tilt as I was once upon a time. Yeah, yeah. Makes me sad. Makes me sad. I may have to say it. May have to. Uh... To get some free time, I may have to network with Nagash and see if uh, let them handle the necromancy side and I'll handle the uh, the Lovecraftian side of things. A uh, dastardly duo, if you will. There you go. There you go. Nice. That'd be fun. <laughs> get a little skeletal uh, comrade. Yeah. I am, I'm looking to play a villain when Ashes comes out. You, every good story needs a good antagonist. Yeah, and I'm I don't know. Where would you say uh, he falls on the the spectrum there, Woodchip? Like reading a bunch of his stuff, I'd almost be like, I'm pretty sure he'd be like the true definition of chaotic neutral. Just doesn't really care. Whatever, as long as he can have his undead army. Going full corrupt on day one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, to be fair, it's all in perspective and who is good and who is evil, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. True story. Look at Bree over there busting out the philosophical chops. <laughs> it's a secret. <laughs> it's a philosophy kind of day, isn't it? <laughs> but um, yeah. So also the the dev discussion. Mm. What's your feelings on overgearing? Which I've got to say, I'm not sure exactly how they're defining overgearing because they say, and here's the question. What's your view on overgearing, aka twinking? Definition number one. Giving, and then they say giving a higher level equipment to lower level characters. But twinking has always been you go through the hardest content to get the best gear possible that's limited to that level character. That's what I've always known as twinking. Like not really getting level 80 armor and giving it to a level 10, because most games have that restricted. Mm. Yeah, I no. when I look at twinking, I'm I look at it from the perspective of well, what they did in World of Warcraft. What twinking was considered was you had the ability to lock your XP at a certain level. So, say mm -hmm. you lock your XP at level twenty, and then you get the best gear for level twenty that you could get, and you would go out into battlegrounds and things like that and just wreck people. I'm talking full Miley Cyrus out there singing your heart out and just running through people like a train. And that's what I look at. Now, if they go the other route of you can wear higher level gear, uh, I don't think it would necessarily be a bad thing. Uh, what I'd want them to do is basically, if you're not of that level, you're only getting a certain level of stats from it. But I, mm -hmm. I don't think it would wreck the game, per se. I think it would be an interesting thing. Uh, maybe if you're wearing gear that's too high level for you, it takes more damage or whatever. Some sort of downside would need to be had to it besides just knocking down the stats. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, thank you, by the way, Social Gaming Sports. Love the random. Have a great stream. That's fantastic. <laughs> thank you. And welcome in but, um, here. And there, yes, the day is going very well thus far. Very well. 
Yeah, thank you. I agree with uh, Theater Elf, actually. All right. Theater Elf said... That basically... Is always giving. Yeah, tweaking was always giving good gear to your alts, especially in World of Warcraft. Um, so, uh, pushing really hard on my main character to unlock the super OP that I could buy on my alt character so that my alt character is super overpowered and I could just whoop, straight through the levels. Like, um, the best gear that will always be better than the... I guess, highest level of gear for level 1 through 60, for example. And then you go to the next level of so-and-so to buy that over-leveled gear. <laughs> Might have done that yeah. a time or three. <laughs> now, see, the term twinking to me in every game I've played before has always, um, always fallen into, like, two classes. One is where it's either all, it's either all... Um, level limited, like all the gear is level limited, and you just pick a pick a tier, and you leave your character at that level, and you get them the best gear you possibly can. Sometimes involving using a high level character to run through other dungeons to, you know, run it the fifteen thousand times you need to to get that one special drop, and that's all there is. And and the other games that where that flexes a little bit is there's one specific tier in the game or two specific tiers in the game where that level everybody twinks on because there's some gear that's not level restricted mm -hmm. and that gear that's not level restricted really overpowers like say level 10 twinking or level uh, like 20 twinking or 30 twinking specifically because there's a super powerful sword and shield combination or like a super powered armor that's level like you can find it three levels above but it has no level restriction to it like stuff like that but it's still it's it's limited to a certain area and most gear you can't just drop level 80 gear on a level 20 that just it just what i haven't seen anybody uh competitively twinking in games like that like at all yeah i mainly used it because like a new class or race came out and i really wanted to play that <clears throat> class or race and so I would just twink them so I could get them up to current level content. <laughs> and you know, uh, Ashes, uh, Ashes of Nair, Nair and uh, Cabal, the only reason I would disagree with that is because if you go into professional fighting circle, cir circuits right now, like in MMA or boxing or wrestling or anything, there's weight brackets, right? Like you got your heavyweight, your, your uh, bantam weight and all that, all that stuff. Now, people will go through and they will mass up as much as they possibly can and then tone down to get just barely within that bracket. So they're doing their best and they're putting in effort to lock themselves in at a certain tier and getting the best that they possibly can while staying in that tier. Mm. So if they okay. accidentally get too muscled, they will actually, you know, tone down in whatever way they have to. Yeah. Sorry, I thought you were finished there. Kapal, what do you Oh, think? I am now. Sorry. It's okay. So, I hadn't really looked at it in the aspect of of weight brackets. I think that's an interesting argument for it. And while my personal feelings are that I don't like the idea of being able to lock levels, I can definitely see the reason why it might behoove Ashes to have that system in there where they can do it. Because there may be people that, you know, want to... You know fight at that tier and that's where they enjoy it and they feel like you know tiers above it are unbalanced and things like that or there may be people who are you know like you said earlier maybe there's equipment there's that's just really good at that level and that's where they want to stay and use that equipment um i don't want to you know poo poo on anybody's way that they're going to play the game i think that's one of the things that appeals to me the most about ashes is there is such as it's slated at the moment, such a variety of ways that you can approach it and what you chip? can play it. Wow. Oh my gosh, wood chip. <laughs> wood chip Thank poggers. You. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, so okay, very appreciated, well, my, wood chip. My train of thought just went off the tracks. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I 
if that's the way that somebody wants to play, um, I don't think my personal feelings towards it should affect it. And I, I hope that's the way that Intrepid is approaching it as well. Um, yeah. a, a lot of the systems are just, it's a, we're going to have to see how it works. And, and, you know, that's part of the reason I'm not making a lot of Ashes content at the moment is we just, we're not seeing the actual, the hard footage, hard data of how it works. And I think it's because we um, don't have that quite solidified yet, right? So. Yeah. yeah that's just, why a lot of stuff is still going to be really in flux for a while. Yeah. And it, I hope you don't mind if I bring this back to Reddit or anything, but it does make sense why Reddit is a little bit annoyed at all of the new content creators going like everything you need to know about Blink and everything you could uh, that we know about Blink so far and stuff like that. And I, I, I realize that there must be an influx of of creators that are trying to jump on this, you know, but at the same time, it's really endearing to see the number of new people interested in Ashes. And I'm, excuse me, I'm super curious to see, you know, where we go from there and um, who ends up sticking around in the long term and who's just here for the fluff, you know. Um, but I think my favorite about Ashes is. There is so many people that I've met in the three years that uh, Vertec and I have backed Ashes of Creation at this point that I would have never probably gamed with them in the first place because I don't play Call of Duty, because I don't play Fortnite, I don't play a lot of anything outside of strict MMORPG type games or RPGs in general, um, even the JRPG types. Um, for example, I'm all about the Genshin Impact right now, <laughs> and uh, I, I'm not really a PvP type of person. And so I love that Ashes is taking all these different player types and just mashing them together, you know, and allowing an interesting common ground of different play styles. And I 100% love what you said about you know not like poo-pooing on anybody else's play style because i think at the end of the day ashes is here to draw a very diverse and unique set of play styles um, which fit different aspects of its game and i think that's going to be something super interesting to watch play out oh yeah definitely i am super looking forward to it to see all these these different approaches to playing games and come together especially in the form of guilds and yeah. seeing some just weird strategies come out of it Definitely. yeah yeah i mean there's like you said there's going to be so many different things that people can do that, that you're going to be able to delve so deeply into one system or one specific area of the game that there's going to be always something new to talk about and always something new to get done with your character always i definitely can't but, uh, wait until april for the alpha one to release just to have some like actual game stuff to chat about with you guys oh yeah. man so i do not have alpha one access oh unfortunately we, we tried really hard to get a key over the last weekend <laughs> we're like oh they're doing another key giveaway maybe we could win a king give it away because we even asked uh oh who was it one of the mods um i well, Vertec had me message them specifically say, if we want a key, are we allowed to re-give it away? I know we can't sell it, but can we just at least re-give it away? And they're like, yes. So we're like, we were trying really hard to get a key. <laughs> and we're like, I want to give one away. <laughs> oh, yeah. But so so my way I'm approaching it is I will be collaborating with, I, I don't know if you guys have heard of him, uh, another streamer called It's Fane. Hmm. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, me and him will be collaborating together when Alpha One drops to nice. put out videos about classes and the systems and how it's going to work together. Yeah. And that was that was our solution to it. He'll be handling the streaming side and I'll be handling the YouTube side. So, cool, but, cool. yeah, yeah. Fane was going to be I'm, somebody else I was going to reach out to to pop on the show at some oh point. No, Fane, Fane's a good guy. I I enjoy interacting with him and his audience and. Yeah, if if there's somebody I would suggest you have on the show, it's definitely him. Love him to death. Great guy. He's helping me out, and I'm helping him out. Just another part of the community that I would have, you know, if it wasn't for Ashes, I would have never met him or met, you know, his community or things like that. 
just okay. great okay. wonderful definitely be on the list here then for sure for sure we have to reach out say hi mm. i hope you guys do get a key though i would love to see your take on it well thank you uh we both are personally backers so we didn't need the key we just wanted to give you guys a chance another chance at getting a key Smaller yeah we're pool. more trying to <laughs> yeah trying to see if we can still take part in the giveaways and such to maybe get one for for a friend that we really want to play with us and get one for for you folks out here as well that haven't had the chance to to pick up an alpha one for any reason whatsoever yeah. Oh, okay. Um, I, I misunderstood then. I don't like you anymore. You have alpha and I don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, the good that's news awesome is, that you guys went out there trying to do it for your community, though. Um, well, thank you. Well, the good news is uh, Alpha 1 in April will be not NDA. So, um, we're taking a lot out. of random information hitting the, hitting the stream like, that too. everywhere. Yeah. Twitch is going to be lit up with Ashes people. Yeah, Vertech and I will be trying to stream it um, during that time period as well. So, yeah, we got some yeah. time for for the the IRL to chill out a bit before then, so we should be able to to get some time in. Ria Khan, I really hope you're not moving during Alpha. I, I'll be so sad. <laughs> yeah, I guess to catch oh. up on chat a little bit here. Yeah, horrendous um, guild hand me downs to new players. Yeah, that's definitely a valid way to get some some twinking in. Especially if they have like a prized PvP or that uh, you know gets the guild some renown and whatnot, I'm sure that you know guild hand me downs and guild donations go a long way there. Yeah, um, yeah. And air, yeah. What about certain attribute levels or to to wear? That I think is one of the more fair ways to go about it when it comes to like if you need say 100 strength to wear a certain type of armor. Because you could totally focus hardcore in in one direction, like go all strength as much as you can, and yeah, then you can finally wear that piece of plate. And that to me is more valid than you have to be level forty seven. But I'm a wizard. Yeah, well, here's your full plate. Go wear it. You're a away. wizard, Vertech. <laughs> <laughs> You're a wizard, Vertech. But requiring that, certain that stats. Would, that would be interesting. I I would definitely like to see. If maybe that's something that Ashes has thought of, like going with stats instead of levels. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I figure, you know, I'm if sorry, you end up getting English. like, if you want to go and you want to <laughs> take on a certain, uh, say, dungeon boss or something, you could give yourself like a scroll of strength to get that ten extra strength to wear like the badass two-handed sword or whatever that'll that'll do more damage. Sure, so be it. But then as soon as that scroll runs out, you're gonna drop the sword. You're have to cast ashamed. the scroll again. Yeah, and be ashamed. <laughs> Because you are weak. <laughs> that but would also be. Your money. That would also be something really cool, and I could see stimulating the economy as well as being able to boost up by consumables to wear equipment. That's mm -hmm. wow! I never would have thought of that. Money. Vertic over here with the five head. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! <laughs> Boy, but yeah, Rickon. Hopefully, we'll uh, we'll be able to get you in there too. And horrendous, you have Alpha One key. We're going to go in, going hard, come with us, be in our stream team. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and swap the background from over gearing to the Fan Friday thing again. Oh. Oh. Kind of I mean, Race Emma never really had real alphas like Asha's. This is going to be interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Fractured? No. No, I haven't tried Fractured yet. Yeah, you know what's funny about that? Um, that Fan Friday? <laughs> Is that a squid? Someone ended up, uh, they did a, uh, what was it? Uh, give us your best caption for this Fan Friday, right? And someone with the name of it's M-H-K-H and a bunch of numbers. <laughs> and they say, Cthulhu, for the last time, it's my weekend with the kid. Yours is next week. <laughs> I like that. I don't that. know why, but it tickled my funny bone. It's got tentacles in it. 11 out of 10. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not biased at all. Stop judging me. And someone else says, annihilating tentacle hentai, one arrow at a time. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <sighs> Local knight defends against cosmic heater. Yeet. 
Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. I hate, I hate Calamari Knight. And DJ Penguin. Be gone, spooky tentacle ghost. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I like it. I like it. You can leave yeah, also, your very own caption right at that link. You can leave your very own caption. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Yeah, Nera, I have also not tried Fractured. Not as of yet. I don't even know what Fractured is. It I've is heard a of it. Movie. I don't know what it is. Movie? A jest, a jest. <laughs> it's, a, it's a game. That's all I know. That's the extent of my knowledge. I think I've seen, like, an advertisement for it and then never really did anything for it. It's an addictive game for sure. Yeah, see, I, um... <laughs> I'm going to show how easily swayed I am in just a second. Um, Vertec and I went to a place which I have learned is called a micro center out here and not a type of place, but a place. <laughs> and, it's the business um, name, not the business type. Yeah, like grocery store versus Safeway. I thought it was a grocery store type, like the type of store was a micro center. Because where I'm from, we have stores called Fry's. So I thought Fry's would be classified as a micro center. No, micro center is a store. Uh, but anyway, uh, we were looking for some upgrades for him. And there was this spiffy computer case that caught my attention. And it happened to have somebody streaming Genshin Impact. And immediately I was like, oh, what game is that? I want to play that game. <laughs> and now here I am about a month later. <laughs> yes, well, fair, Micro Center is the best store ever. It's the biggest toy store ever that you need don't, to visit. We don't have those on the West Coast. It is fries. <laughs> I mean, there might be one, but that might be super South California. And I was very much Northern California, and there wasn't anyone anywhere like that. And I've never been to the East Coast before that guy over there. Yeah, pretty much. That's basically what <laughs> Shut it was. Up and we take were, my money. <laughs> we were goggling at this amazing looking computer, like RGB, everything tastefully done. By the way, mm -hmm. not just everything was shiny, but it was tastefully done RGB. It looked really good. You nice, don't like clean, the white case to blast out your eyeballs? <laughs> no, 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 not that much. <laughs> but, uh, and then right next to it was, you know, um, Legends of Zelda. I mean, uh, Genshin <laughs> Impact. <laughs> but no, doesn't it look like you just the, made somebody the Switch angry. game? <laughs> it looks like it and plays like it, even with how the gliding works. But uh, I mean, either way, yeah. Great game. Fun game. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Riacon. Uh, we, we hopped on the Final Fantasy XIV bandwagon for a little while, and I really enjoyed Final Fantasy XIV. It just. I got burnt out because we found like our own little like rating group and they're like, no, I want you to be this class. No, this class. No, this class. Oh no, this God. class. No, I want to be that class. And I'm like, I they wanted, they couldn't just figure <laughs> out what they wanted us to be. We're like, Hey, you know, I can tank or I can heal, but you know, I also like to DPS on this, on this one here. So, you know, let me know. Like, yeah, 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 do this. Okay. So we start pushing really hard on that class. Uh, actually, you know what? Go ahead and do this. Uh, okay. So we start pushing really hard on that class. Yeah. And then, no, actually, what we need. Oh my God. Yeah. I yeah. just want to yeah. be a dragoon and poke things with my pointy stick. Yeah, pretty much. I'm like, <laughs> can you please just help me focus on like one or two classes? One or two. Just, do you want me to heal or do you want me to? But I want to be the white mage. Okay. Well, see, it wouldn't have been so bad if like a new raid hadn't come out and we were looking at, at which class to push and we were getting very limited drops Yeah. that are very time gated and we're spending those on currency to buy specific gear for specific characters and then three weeks of doing that and they go, oh yeah, do something else instead. Yeah. <sighs> okay. That's okay. Yeah. yeah and that, that whole system in FF14 it has its ups and its downs yeah well it was it was great until that happened and then that's kind of when we both stopped playing because i at first it was like i'm just gonna take a break i'm getting overwhelmed by this and then i just never came back <laughs> lost our will to log in <laughs> mm -hmm. but that's all right though because we got busy doing other stuff and moving and getting new jobs and all that stuff anyway but so the jacobos jacobo but the jacobos now, now we know why now we know why Bree is going for that job. She needs it for Genshin Impact. 
Mm -hmm. <laughs> pretty much. The addiction setting in pretty hard. It pretty is, hard. though. It is, though. <laughs> I'm sitting here going, wallet, tear. I want food, though. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, no I want Genshin. food, but I also want that character. I know, I'm so I... tired of eating ramen. <laughs> but I will say for any other fellow weebs out there, it's actually a pretty good game. Yeah. It is. It is. To it is you know a pay to win because you gotta buy freaking gotcha stuff to get characters and all, but you don't actually have to. Nope. I guess. I actually. So I guess it's not really pay account. to win. It's kind it's, of pay to win. Not it's really. It's pay to be more winning. There you go. <laughs> you can win without paying any money for it, but you'll be I, more winning by spending I have a money. second you don't account. Have to do it, Bree. <laughs> I have a second account that we're not putting any money into just because I was waiting for that guy over there to catch up to us um, in terms of <laughs> AR level. But, um, pay to be more winning, like every game nowadays, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um, but anyway, yeah. we digress. We're going way off the beat. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I thought we were going so, to the discussion deep. round. My bad. Yeah, right. So, uh, <laughs> Sir Cabal, do you have any other Sir Cabal was things? my father. <laughs> Sir Cabal the Junior. <laughs> the Junior. Not, not your junior, first name? The Junior. <laughs> the Junior. <laughs> So do you have any anything that's kind of caught your attention uh, in the past even like month just in the past uh, x amount of time that you haven't really had a chance to to discuss or see anybody else talk about anything that's caught your your eye your mind your your imagination in the ashes room the uh that anybody else hasn't discussed kind of a uh, i was like ooh, wait no uh all the other content <laughs> creators are pretty good about covering stuff I, I think the thing that got me most excited was the live stream and the lore dumps um, I was really course, excited when I, we hit that goal. I was like, "Ooh, lore!" <laughs> oh yeah, well, I definitely, I definitely got some tingles because uh, I love me some lore, and it always happens that Stephen reveals just a bit more than he should, and then he gets that like yeah. mean look from Margaret. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying, I wasn't expecting that much to be revealed. I mean, you knew there was going to be something coming out because you know, charity live stream, hit goals, reveal lore, that type of thing, but. I don't think he's ever dropped that big of a bomb outside of like the initial here's what the game is and here's the setting for the world. Everything yeah. else, even the revealing of the planet name was literally just the revealing of the planet name. It wasn't that deep or an explanation of why it's called <laughs> that or anything. It was just, here's the planet name. It's Vera. Yeah. Ian. Yeah. Sorry, Woodchips is oh. at Recon. Maybe we can talk about add-ons and then we can have a 24-hour stream. <laughs> oh, please no. <laughs> Like 24 hours it would take 24 solid hours to get everybody's viewpoints out on something like the add-ons and could have another 24 hour stream on dps meters oh my god that's no not comment. even <laughs> that would be that would be a dumpster fire it would <laughs> i kind of want to see somebody do it but i'm not sure if i want to be the one to do it <laughs> it's like just have a discussion do i'm gonna do it I regret have a discussion. this. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Let's have a live stream discussion <laughs> until everybody's satisfied that they've said their piece. Not satisfied at the, the resolution, but just, okay, I've said enough. I've said my piece. So you're going to be live streaming for the rest of your life? Yeah, yeah, because somebody <laughs> new is going to come in and they're going to be like, what's this all about? DPS meters? Oh. Often PvP for three oh. days. <laughs> oh my god. I just, I leave that decision up to Intrepid because nothing that I can say is going to satisfy everybody and ultimately I have no power over it. So when the mm -hmm. trip says, I just, I just go with whether I feel one way or the other. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And there, man, that's something that I am hoping is the world's longest practical joke. And that right before launch, like the day before, or even the day of launch, we find out the tank is actually called something else. And it's or, just been labeled as tank for this whole entire time. Or they could be really, really mean and give us a name change for April Fools. Yeah, right. Oh man, that would kill me. That would kill uh -oh. me. <laughs> We're gonna call it the shield bearer. And turns out you can do wield shields. Everybody's heads explodes. 
<laughs> we've taken we've taken uh, customers' viewpoints into play. You know, we think we think you're right. Tank is kind of a bad name. We're gonna name him Wall. All right, Wall is gonna be the name of the archetype now. <laughs> you joke it, right? You joke it, right? <laughs> Watch them like make a a fake rename for it. That's way worse than Tank. The people are just like, just make it Tank. It's like, I'll I'll deal with Wally. Tank. <laughs> 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 Shield hero. <laughs> oh right. man. Ah, alrighty. <clears throat> but, I'm sorry. I, yeah. Any last <laughs> words for our Ooh. podcast? Ooh. As we Ooh, last have... words, that kind of, kind of morbid. <laughs> I felt like it fit with the theme. <laughs> yeah. Bom bom bom. Yeah, ominous. <laughs> Am I at least get a blindfold and a cigarette. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is a non-smoking zone. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I can always get the fog want to, machine for you if you really want the smoke aspect. We could roll out a fog oh. machine, you know. So. I love fog machines. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Uh, it's okay. No, no, really, any uh, last words? Uh, pers- well, I guess yeah, there are some last words. Uh, well, first off, thank you for having me on. No problem. Oh, pleasure. It's been a are very we, enjoyable are, conversation. Are we ending it, or am I just confused? Uh, we are. It, I mean, unless you want to keep talking. Yeah, we're oh, winding okay. it down. We've been on for about an hour and a half at this point. Oh, Lava Gate 2020. Really? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Lava Gate. <laughs> Hashtag toasted. <laughs> Hashtag toasted. But uh, yeah, oh. first off, thanks for having me on. Um, I really appreciate it. it. I was not expecting it, and you know, it makes me love the community a little bit more that yeah, you guys would feel like I'm worthy of having on. Uh, I look forward to, you know, hopefully being on with you guys uh, in the future more. Yeah, uh, definitely. Hearing more from you and, you know, covering everything that comes out as the game progresses. <laughs> um, other than that, I keep getting tagged in chat and I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> they're just saying that they're really happy that you're here, which is very sweet of our. Thank you guys for you know well, making appreciate him feel that. welcome. Yeah, they uh, said right you should now, be on I more often. Lo- <laughs> I'm glad because I feel like I've kind of like fumbled in some places. Oh no, no, but, no! Actually, um, this is pretty much. Have our you podcast. seen our show before? We fumble like all the time. <laughs> Don't you worry. <laughs> The, that whole term Fair of enough. worthy you're yeah. mentioning, I'm not sure if we're going to be like grassroots till the day we decide to hang up the podcasting mic. So, yeah, I will let you guys know, though, that this is the first time I have ever been on a live stream. Oh, yeah. Hmm, all right. Well, you done did good. You done did good. I appreciate that. You made and everyone I'm look glad, professional. Yeah. And I'm glad it was it was with you, Bree, and with you, Vertec. Aww, you guys have been awesome. You. Well, thank We're you. Super Very kind excited. words. I hope to work with you more yeah. in the future. Definitely. Absolutely. Before you go, I had a quick question. Um, oh, yeah. Is there anything you're planning with your content? So, with my content, uh, like I said before, I am planning. Leaks, leaks. Cover, oh. I am, yeah. <laughs> I am planning to cover Alpha One uh, with the, you know, collaborating with, you know, another streamer, It's Fane. Um, also, I do plan to here in the next couple months start live streaming myself. Mm. It won't be Ashes related. It will be survival and open world games, but I will be taking up the mantle of a VTuber because uh, I too am a filthy weeb and I shall use that power to venerate the gods of gaming and all of their tentacly goodness. Show them the weeb. Oh, yeah. Bring oh, that weeb yeah. game. <laughs> yeah. All right, what's so the best that, place to catch you when that comes around? Are you doing the YouTube streaming? Are you doing the Twitch streaming? Or are you going to do both until you I find... I saw he like, had a Twitch channel with four followers, by the way, guys. This guy has four I followers. Haven't even live streamed once. I'm knocking it out of the park. We got to so we gotta, my, gotta get, it, get it higher. <laughs> my, my current plan is to uh, stream on Facebook, YouTube, and... Uh, What's the other one? Twitch. The one that I'm on right now. Of course I forget <laughs> that one. Oh, of course. Yeah. Uh, oh, I'm to not be fair, going for a... technically you're in okay. Zoom. Oh, oh true. <laughs> <laughs> First time I ever used Zoom as well, 
Like you guys just got me way out of my comfort zone. I'm out here. I don't We're know just where like I'm all at. the things. We're taking all the it's cherries. Like I'm a, all. It's like I'm locked in a car trunk and I'm just going somewhere. Well, uh, you know, that's how yeah. we do our show. We just we lock people in trunks <laughs> all day or day. Oh my this God. is what we do. Fair enough. But yeah, uh, when that happens, you can catch me on YouTube. You can catch me here on Twitch. Uh, if you want to follow me on Twitter, I'll be putting out updates for any content that I do make there. And if anybody has an idea for content they want me to make, that's the best way to hit me up. And I'm always open to ideas and criticism. Uh, like I said before, community is my main thing as a content creator. And you know, the bigger the community, the more people that want to participate, feel like they're part of it, the better. I got my first critique. Yeah. You need to work on your live stream. I don't see any of them. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. That that is a valid critique. I will take that into account. <laughs> Good I, I, gotta get a base, I gotta get a face to put out there besides just a static logo first though. So that's okay. Yeah. There's Working actually right some now. of some of the content creators in uh in Ash's community still haven't quite put out a face yet. Yep. Some of yeah, them yeah. some of them recently have, but most of them have just been icons for the most part. <laughs> um, do I? I don't have a. I don't have a face. Ashes of Nair. Well, I do have a face. It's just you see. It's purple. A cultist that, that lives in a cave, and it's really hard to get Amazon to deliver webcams out here. And uh, <laughs> unfortunately, it's like so mutated from the blessings of the gaming gods. I just keep breaking them, so I just kind of gave up on it. Ah, uh, valid. Sad. It's very valid. Yep. <laughs> it's not easy being a cultist. <laughs> it's uh, not a cult. It's come on. That's right. Cabal. <laughs> Any last words? So, for if you? you want to join the cabal, <laughs> um, for a tag, well, uh, on unlike the live stream or anything, the charity stream. Well, I would say, uh, last words, um, just to respond over to Horrendous, uh, the cosmetics I'm most looking forward to seeing rendered, I forget what they were exactly called, but it was a very blue set, and it was for uh, one of the human, um, one of the human uh, sub-races, and it had like the, the thunder, the thunder people, with all the blue and the, the, the thunderbird and all that. Mm, mm, mm. I'm trying my damnedest to remember the name of any of the cosmetics. <laughs> I just remember oh. the I just remember the overall like aesthetic and saying that's gonna look really freaking cool when they make it and actually yeah. render it in game. It's not the snores. <laughs> the snores. And uh Z, uh yes, we remember when you were worthy too. It was when you were not in timeout for burning down the gigantic <laughs> building. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> but no oh. on a serious note we love you guys <laughs> love all of you thank you so much for spending your time with us it's greatly appreciated I want to throw one more shout out to Woodchip dear Bob 159 subs you have thrown us you are fantastic and an amazing supporter of so much of the community helping so many streamers out and and helping them just get things like the visuals that we have upgraded on our own stream here like all yes. of this that you see around my picture that was that was in large part to you sir um i don't want to downplay anybody else who's donated even just a dollar at any time because you're all amazing and we love you all even if you just spend your time with us because yeah. honestly my time is more valuable than any donation i could give somebody so i agree Maybe and we appreciate we all like of it <laughs> Yeah, we would like to sometime maybe do another community chat because it's been a while since our last one. And we'd just like to get all of you in our Discord uh, and just kind of chat about Ashes and just hang out. Maybe play some Fall Guys. I don't know, that sounds fun to me at least. I've not played it and I mean, who wouldn't want to make a bunch of jelly beans fall over anyway? <laughs> just um, some Jackbox to get in. Yeah, yeah, maybe yeah. some Jackbox Specific again. Jackbox games. Yep, we learned our lesson. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, my final words like from everything. like there's a story there. <laughs> <laughs> well, anytime you put Twitch and Jackbox together, there's usually a story. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but um, my last words are to 
or to Maggie, uh, I just want to say congratulations on your wedding and congratulations, though it's sad, for not hitting 200K so you didn't have to shave half your head. Um, <laughs> your hair was able to be saved. Congratulations. <laughs> but also, congratulations, Ashes of Creation uh, community on raising almost 90K. That's amazing. And we look forward to seeing how much you raise next year. And thank you, Cabal, for joining us and giving us all your cherries and uh <laughs> we hope it's a that pleasure. yeah we hope that you reach out to us if there's ever a subject that pops up where you're super interested in like yes get me on the show or hey i have an idea for a topic i want to talk about this i saw this on the forums let's just let's go for it and we'll be like yeah let's go so <laughs> first i gotta go learn about this nagash character do i it. highly recommend do it, it. <laughs> And I guess yes. you refine this video. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, it was already, their well, fault. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, aside from all that, thank you again for another great Friday evening. And uh, we will be back next week with another guest. Yes, sleep well with Chip and everyone else. Yes, don't forget November 15th with our friend... Some Pathfinder. Seamorg, aka Phoenix, aka the guy at the place with the Pathfinder things and stuff. Yeah. Is that he too, will much? Come to you. too much? <laughs> <laughs> but no, oh. he's a great guy. 100th episode. 100th episode. It's a good milestone. With Steven. Wow. You might find more leaks there, just saying. <laughs> with El Stefan. Yes. I see those hammers and chats. Alrighty. Yeah. Get the shaved. Thank you all for joining us. We'll see you next week. Everybody Bye. take care. Love Stay you safe all. out there, folks. Have a good yeah. day. Peace.